happy Tuesday. Happy Sparkling Tuesday. I hope your day is going great. Um, I think I'm live. Let me just double check. Well, hopefully I'm live. <laughs> Anyways, we are here today talking about part three of Nail Your Prices. The week before last, we covered covering your costs, and last week we added profit to that to make sure we stay profitable, so we stay in business. That's my whole thing, just in case you've missed it somehow. My passion is to make sure that you makers make profit doing what you love. Um, and today we're going to add markup, talk about what that is, and so on. So. First, we'll cover what is markup and what it covers, uh, how much markup to add, how to calculate your retail price with markup, and a final worked example where we go through all three steps. If you have any questions as we go along, do pop them in the chat. If you are watching, please do pop hashtag daffodil. Sure, we we'll use daffodil again. Um, so that I can know that it's live. Usually it shows me on here. Ah, good, I am. Okay, good. Anyways, still pop a hashtag down the bill if you feel like it. So, um, what is markup and what does it cover? These, I realized, kind of should have been together. Um, markup allows you to offer discounts and it adds padding to your business for unexpected expenses, basically. Um, it covers wholesale or consignment um, pricing. It covers customer discounts and sales. So when you offer 10% off, 10% um, off leave me an Etsy review, 20% uh, off for Mother's Day sale, what have you. Um, that needs to be built in at this stage where we're adding markup. It doesn't need to come out of the price we figured out last week because that's just covered your costs and your um, profit. So you don't want to cut into either of those. You want these, these discounts to be on top. It covers free shipping if you decide to offer that. It covers um, any kind of guarantees you might have on your products or broken things, uh, things that break in transit, things that need repairs. Uh, so for most of those, you should be able to claim from your shipping company. Uh, but occasionally I see situations happen where uh, basically out of a gesture of goodwill, the maker replaces something that uh, the shipping company won't basically won't reimburse them for. So, uh, and I'm sure that you've, you're much more familiar with that than I am. But anyways, so it needs to cover those. It needs to also provide you padding for one-off business expenses that you can't base, that you can't necessarily predict. So, um, this is things like, sorry, just totally lost my train of thought. Um, things like broken equipment, um, unexpectedly needing to in, uh, replace your equipment, flood, like there's a burst pipe in your premises and you end up having to uh, pay, you know, the excess. You should have insurance that should hopefully cover that, but the excess for that, and, and so on. So that's what markup is and what it covers. How much to add? Okay, so for this we've got several of several different things we were just talking about. So there's wholesale. You're pricing on a product by product basis. If it's a, an item that you're never going to wholesale, skip this part for this product. 
Um, so last week we were talking a little bit about memorial jewelry. That's a product you really can't wholesale unless you're making the the outer stuff. If you're actually making the, if you're putting it together with the remains to sell to the end customer, then obviously that can't be wholesaled. Uh, so consider the product, each product individually when you're doing this. If it's a product that you do you want to wholesale or you want to leave yourself the wiggle room to wholesale by setting your prices that high to start with and then seeing how it goes? You generally want to give 50% for that. So when you sell to a retailer who then wants to sell it on, they want, they're usually going to want around a 50% markup for themselves. So if you sell it to them for 10 pounds and they sell it to the end customer for 20 pounds, um, make, if, if you are, and make sure that you're accounting for VAT the same way for both of those prices. So you may not be VAT registered, but the shop might be. So if they're selling it for 20 pounds off of your 10 pounds without VAT, then they need to be looking, you need to, the, the, the retail price needs to be 24 pounds actually to cover the VAT. So anyways, wholesale is usually around 50%. Consignment, so this is where you have a shelf in a shop or something like that and instead of charging your rent for the shelf or possibly in addition to charging your rent, they, they charge consignment on sales. Um, different makers prefer different arrangements. The, sh the rent on the shelf is a nice predictable thing. Consignment, you build it into your product prices at this point, so you shouldn't be out, but um, it is a variable cost every month. Many makers will prefer consignment because it gives the store own, the shop owner and, and their people impetus to actually sell your stuff, to try to encourage customers to buy. So it's, it's up to you how you do that, but if you do use consignment, you're building it in here. Check with the shops that you might do consignments with for their rates. If you're not at that stage yet and you're not ready to talk to them, use 30 to 40 percent as a general rule of thumb. Um, customer sales discounts. Be careful with these. Now I'm planning a pricing psychology series later on and that will go into more of this, but the um, y you just need to be careful about the perceived value of your products if you consistently have sales. You know, a bit like, um, what's it called, DF DFS or something, that sofa place. Right, they always have a sale on, which makes you automatically think that the value of their stuff isn't actually worth full price. And if you need a couch when they're not on sale, you'll, you'll probably just wait unless you really need it now. Or you'll go somewhere else, because you don't actually think it's really worth that full price. Anyways, so be careful with this, but you're, you generally get, so think about the maximum discount that you might want to give on this product or generally across your shop. So you might want to cap that at 10% or at 20% or whatever. So. Um, something I forgot to put on this list. If you want to use affiliates or influencer marketing, then you um, need to build that in at this point too. So if you're uh, custom, if if you want to be able to give a code to 
an influencer or an affiliate or what have you, whereby the end customer gets 10% off and you pay 10% to the affiliate as well, then you need to increase your price at this point by 20%, for example. What else? Free shipping. Uh, we'll just stick it here. So consider the shipping price of this particular item if you're going to sell it online and need shipping. Um, if you are going to go for the consignment or the wholesale, then it, the free shipping. This cost, so. I keep forgetting I have paper to hand. Okay, so. This is your price, the whole price. This is your 100% price in the end. That's half because I say it's half. This is your wholesale price or discount. So that's 50%. that we get our uh, we're gonna say that's 40 percent inside that you get your consignment so it's like a Venn diagram sort of of 40 percent right that is your customer discounts of up to I'm gonna say up to 20% it's entirely up to you that's not a number none of these are numbers that are set in stone um, they're just ideas for you and you have free shipping so the way this works is if you're going to do wholesale, all of these other things are absorbed into that 50% because you're not going to offer all these other things on top of wholesale to the same person at the same time. If you're going to offer consignment, then the customer discounts and the free shipping are also covered at the same time as the consignment because you're not going to offer customer discounts and free sh shipping is not a thing. It's a it's a sh shelf in a shop. There's no shipping. So that's, an, but you can offer the customer discount, the free shipping to your online customers, and know that those prices have already been built in, those discounts, if you've built in the consignment or if you've built in the wholesale. If you haven't built in either of those, if this is not an item that you're going to wholesale or consign then you'll figure these two individually. If, okay, does that make sense? Is anybody watching at the moment? Can you, yes, somebody is. Can you tell me if that made sense, please? Um, right. So those are the kinds of things that are covered, and that's the kinds of amounts that you should have in mind. As I say, give some thought to your customer discount structure and, and any affiliate or influencer marketing that you might want to use as well. Give some thought to, or do some research to your local area's consignment rates if you're going to use that. You can Google to find wholesale for your very specific um, product uh, type, basically, and you can get in touch with retailers in your area and ask them what they might want as well.
Thank you, yes. Thank you, Rue. Okay, I'm glad that makes sense. Right, um, now I... This pen's still alive. I said how to calculate your retail price with markup, and we're going to do a final worked example. Uh, so, I think it's going to just be easier if we just do the final worked example, which includes that step three, to be honest. So, we are going to look at an example of a jewelry box. We're going to take a piece of wood and we're going to turn it into a jewelry box. Um, in step one, we looked at our costs, which is material, labor, overhead, and postage, basically. Your, okay, and um, the first uh, material, uh, so we, that was easy to figure out. We know how much wood we use to make a jewelry box. We looked at the price of it. We included any shipping that we might need to pay to receive that piece of wood or whatever other materials it is for the product that you're actually looking at, okay? Don't forget that shipping, that internal, uh, that inward carriage, okay? Um, so that was five pounds, that's easy. Labor though, your hourly rate, so I've got an hourly rate calculator on my website, the link is in the description below, and I ran through, so this person that we're doing this for wants to take home, so this is the, re there's, I covered in week one two ways to think about your hourly rate. There's sort of plucking a number and thinking of it in, in line with maybe their minimum wage or what you've been paid in jobs in the past or things like that, which is not what I recommend. Or the second one is reverse engineering it from how much you need or want to take home. So the first step of that is to figure out how much you need or want to take home, how much your bills are, okay? And that's excluding any of your business expenses. That's, that's later. This is just how much you need or want to pay your bills at home. So this person, I ran this through that calculator already, wants to take home 20,000 pounds a year, wants to work 35 hours a week, is doing 50% of their time on revenue generating work, is actually making jewelry boxes. The other 50% is posting on social media, watching my videos and other training, um, doing their bookkeeping, um, uh, talking to their insurance company once a year to work out their new policy, um, all the other things, uh, you know, listing things on Etsy, all the other things that we have to do. They want four weeks of holiday every year plus the standard eight bank holidays and they've worked out that 25% of their of their turnover of their actual sales is business expenses. So I talked about that. You go to your past years and you say how much was my business expenses. And you divide it by your sales. So this person had um, okay so I actually made this one tiny little bit more complicated. So this person had 6,500 pounds for last year in expenses. But they've realized, after watching this video, that they haven't accounted for any equipment that they'll need to replace in, in this, in their, in their overheads from last year. So they say, wait, okay, and they sit and they tally it up and they say, okay, I think I have a five-year lifespan on all of this, uh, on all of my saws and my, my power tools especially, and, and so forth, and it's going to cost 5,000 pounds every five years to replace it. Now that's really simplified, but you get the idea. So every year they want to add a thousand pounds to their overheads and sort of keep that aside for their equipment fund, basically. If you have Starling, you can use spaces to do this. You can use another space for your tax savings, which we talked about in a previous week. 
Anyway, but that's the general idea. And for that, they had 30,000 pounds in sales. So that came out to 25%. It's really convenient, isn't it? Of overheads. So what that means is that we add 25 pence per pound sale price, basically. So, oh, we were only in the middle of working out the hourly rate. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so we've got the overheads. So we got the take home pay, the hours per week, the revenue generating time. If you don't know it, use 50% as a starting point, if, but do track your time for at least a week and see what it is. Track your work time so that you can get the percentage of uh, work time that is revenue generating and the percentage that is not. Um, they put in how many holidays they wanted and they worked out their business expenses and they went ahead and made that addition. When they did that, all was said and done, they got an hourly rate of 37 pounds and eight pence per hour because you have to realize that that's only for their ge revenue generating time. So it's already double what you might think of. So that's, um, I don't know, half of 37. And that's the uh, turnover of 30,000 a year. That's what they need for that. So that's the hourly rate. And you'll put that into all of your products. And then you need to know how much hours, how many, how much time each product takes you. So, okay, step one, costs. We've got materials, five pounds. Labor. Now we're going to say this jewelry box takes him an hour to make. I think that's wildly too low personally, but I don't make jewelry boxes and I've already used that number. So we're just going to call it 37 pounds. That gives us 42. And now at this point, at this point we add our overheads. Our overheads, I forgot to say, when we calculated that, when we got that 6,500 pound figure, we were excluding any carriage outwards, any shipping fees to customers where we took it to the post office or, or whatever, to a courier, and that because we're dealing with those figures later, and we excluded any fees, any Etsy fees, any Stripe fees, any of those payment processing fees like that, because we are dealing with those later in this process. Okay. Uh, yeah, so these are 25% overheads. So we say 42 times 0 0.25 gives us 10 pounds and 50 pence. This is the actual pound value of our overheads for that item. And you can send with Royal Mail, small parcel up to two kilograms for four pounds 20, so we're gonna use that. Okay, so we need to add Five pounds and thirty-seven pounds and ten fifty and four twenty. I haven't written this out exactly right. To get fifty-six seventy as our base as our base price. Okay. So that's the end of step one. Thanks for joining. I'm sorry this is taking longer than I would have liked. But yes, please catch the replay. Okay. Step two. Last week, we talked about adding a profit margin. 
This one's nice and short and simple. We have decided to add a 10% profit margin on our on our jewelry box. Maybe we've done that across all of our products, maybe just our jewelry box. It doesn't matter at this point. We're just going to do it for our jewelry box. So 56, 70. Okay, the way you work out the amount that it will be when it has 10% more is not to multiply this by 10% and add it because that gives you a bit more actually. Um, the way you do it is to divide it by 0.90, which remember is the same as 90%. Um, and then, so if you divide those two, you get 63. So if you take 63 and you subtract 10%, you get back to 56.70, and that's why we do it this way. So I've said 10%, if your profit margin, if you wanted 20%, this would be 0.80. If you wanted 15%, this would be 0.85. Okay, so it's one minus the, um, the, the margin that you want. Okay, so one minus 25% uh, is 1 minus 0.25 is 0.75, and so on. So use whichever number you want. I need a new one. Okay, now that's the end of step two. So this is your wholesale price. All you have to do in step two. Step three. Okay. Add your margin. Uh, markup. Sorry. Right. Markup. Okay. Uh, we're gonna do this two ways. One with consignment and one without a consignment. You're going to see why. So, A. We're going to do consignment. Consignment of 40%. So, for this jewelry box, this person has decided they're not going to do wholesale pricing. They're, um, they are going to do consignment. So they're going to add this 40% for consignment pricing and they're not going to worry then anymore about the um, customer sales discounts or the free shipping because those will be included, those will be covered by the time we inflate the price by 40% for the consignment. So we had 63 pounds. And again, to get to where you want to be when you've taken off that percentage, you divide by 1 minus. So we're dividing by 0 0.60, which gives us 105 pounds as our retail price. I have no idea how any of you make any money, to be quite honest. Okay, so that's, um, that's your retail price. The one thing we haven't added yet is our Etsy fees. I'm going to say that this person is adding, is going to sell this on Etsy, and Etsy basically has the highest fee. So do this. Of all of your sales channels, you need to work out which one has the highest prices. We'll add that here, and it will cover the lower um, fees from other places. So if you've got a big commerce website or Shopify website, you know, Shopify will be dearer. Um, but, so just double check, get one of those calculators, Shopify charges and um, Etsy charges. So there's an Etsy calculator linked in the description below. You can use that, that's from a reputable source. 
and it's the one that I used. Um, and there'll be Shopify paid calculators as well. But work out which one has the highest prices, and we're going to use that. So Etsy is usually highest. So Etsy. So for this item, uh, because you pay Etsy fees on the retail price, you need to put it in at this point to get that. The calculator gives us 11 pounds and 38 pence. Um, when you're using an Etsy calculator, make sure that it's got the right options for you. Some people have to pay off-site ad fees, which adds quite a bit. Some people don't. So just check. Anyways, so then at this point we add these two together, we get 116.30a is approximately what we need to list it for on Etsy. Right. So let's think we're not going to consign that after all. So now let's think, okay, we're not going to sign it, we're not going to wholesale it, but we do want to possibly offer customer discounts occasionally, and we might want to offer free shipping occasionally. So let's build those in. Now our customer discounts, let's say we only want to go up to 10%, but we do want to offer um, Oh, no, we don't want to offer free shipping because that's what I calculated. So, 10% customer, customer discounts. So we go back to our wholesale price of 63. And Again, we're going to divide it by 1 minus the amount that we're interested in. So we're saying 10% sales, so 1 minus 0 0.1 gives us 0 0.90. And when we divide that out, we get 70 pounds, that's a terrible zero, as our retail price. Okay. And now to this, we add our Etsy fees. which came out to £7.70. So when we add £70 and £7.70, we get £77.70 as our sale price on Etsy. You might be tempted to list it for 70 pounds or maybe 73 or something somewhere else for that has cheaper fees. Uh, beware that Etsy's terms and conditions generally prohibit you from doing that. You, I think, can probably do it for a different item, but not for the same item. Just read their terms and conditions to be sure. Um, and yeah, but so you would charge 7770 everywhere for this item and you would just make more profit if the fees were lower. Right, that's it. That is our final work example. Let me just check to make sure you haven't asked any more questions. Nope. So that's, that's, it. that's how you work it through. Um, I hope that was helpful. Um, have a wonderful week. I hope you're sparkling. And I need to look at the camera, don't I? I keep forgetting. It's usually over there. <laughs> anyway, have a great day. This is Sarah Jane, bookkeeper for Makers and Artisans. Bye.